the best kiss scene <laughs> ever filmed to date. No kiss has ever touched that elevator <laughs> the scene. The brutal murder yeah. right after the kiss yeah. scene. Drive-by movies you're watching sequeled. My name is Blaze. I'm James. This week we're talking Drive Two. If I drive for you, you give me a time and a place. I give you a five-minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes, and I'm yours, no matter what. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. So Ryan Gosling made waves in 2011 with Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I didn't. I don't think I ever met anyone that hated this movie. Maybe now, but yeah. back when it came out, this thing was massive. I remember there were a few people in our theater who just didn't get it, just because <laughs> it was so different and weird of a movie. But it was critically critically acclaimed. I remember, mm -hmm. and pretty much everyone still loved at least the second half of the movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thinking about a sequel to Drive, isn't that like, like off base? Because there was a sequel to the book that's originally based on called mm -hmm. Driven. Mm -hmm. So it is oh, really? it is a thing. Yeah, There was a book that you could base it off, essentially. Yeah. But I haven't read that book, so I'm not going to go out and then you know, base my version off it. Right. I definitely read the synopsis of that book and will use it as inspiration because I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is actually a cool way to get started. Right. Yeah. After revisiting Drive, I'm like, I kind of know where I do want to go with this. Yeah, I understand. So basically, Ryan Gosling's character survives at the end of Drive. I don't know, maybe to refresh everyone's memory, he survives at the end. Yeah. He does kill. He's like wounded driving away into the dark, but he's and probably going to too. He's probably going to survive. Yeah. I think he's like bleeding out, but yeah. like he'll probably make it, let's be honest. Uh -huh. And he has to make it for there to be a sequel to this movie yeah, because he is, you know, the driver. Mm -hmm. Definitely need him if you're going to make Drive 2. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Else there's no driving. Uh -huh. So essentially, I want the movie to be about him. He's kind of laying low. Mm -hmm. uh, he just drove off in the night. So let's say he took that five hour trip from LA to Vegas. Yeah. He's now just been laying low. The movie's going to take about like maybe two or three months after, mm -hmm. or maybe just a month actually, like three weeks a month after the original drive. So it's not too far away from it and it's yeah. still kind of current. And you could, you could do this. I don't think it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ryan Gosling's laying low on like a Las Vegas, like maybe he's doing driving. I don't know if it's like Uber and shit because yeah. that's too comical, but maybe he's just doing like executive driving on the strip, you know, making money, yeah. but also trying to lay low. He's changed his name. We don't even know what his name was for right. the first he was movie. Just so. the driver, I remember. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you don't even need to know that now yeah. that I think about it. So he's been laying low. He's, he's staying at like, like one of those shitty motels that's kind of outside of Vegas. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, you just pay for like a week or something. Right. So he's staying at some shitty hotel, but it's got that like typical Vegas kind of vibe where it's like a shitty pool, mm -hmm. not like Vegas, but the, uh, the yeah. outskirts of Vegas yeah. it gets close to the neighbors and yeah, stuff. there's like live there too. Yeah. There's like maybe kids living there or something. Essentially he's going to wake up to pay his rent one morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the, the Monday goes to pay his rent. And sees uh, like a uh, newspaper. Oh, I'll grab the newspaper, Los Angeles Times. Yeah. So he reads the paper. These two unidentified victims brutally murdered, broad daylight. He's like, oh my God, too. He sees that it was a woman and a boy. Mm -hmm. Freaking starts up his car. Oh no. Is that <laughs> who starts, I think it is? Starts yeah. heading back, starts heading back, goes to his old apartment yeah. uh, to check on, I think her name was Irene, Carrie Mulligan's mm -hmm. character. And he goes to just bust down the door because no one answers. It's, yeah. Just no one there. Turns on the TV. They find out that it was them. Like yeah. they they uh, see who the victims are. He finds out that it's them. Yeah. So he has no leads. Like he needs to get revenge now because this was his girl. Like yeah. at the end of Drive, he literally said everything. He's like meeting you is the best thing of my entire life. Yeah. Remember like right, that yeah. moment when he's on the payphone yeah. saying like still the best kiss <laughs> scene ever filmed to date. No kiss has ever touched that elevator <laughs> The scene. brutal murder yeah. right after the kiss yeah. scene. So basically, he's, he's going to go on a full-on revenge. Mm -hmm. This is a revenge movie. 
uh, it's similar to Drive was a revenge movie, but he yeah. was, you know, fighting back for Standard, right. who was Irene's boyfriend, uh, who had gotten out of prison. But this is going to be him just now that she's dead. Like, he has, I mean, he had nothing to lose in the first one, but yeah. now he's, it's over. Yeah. Like, you've you've created a monster. So he doesn't really have any leads or know what he's, who's, who did it or, like, yeah. what's going on. Because all pretty much everyone in the first movie, Drive movie died. So who possibly could it be? Yeah. But, um... I think his name was Birdie or something or Bert. He said that there were connections to the Philadelphia, uh, like oh, East Coast yeah. Italian mob. Yeah. You know, like that's why they had to kill everyone in that first movie. Yeah. So basically, they found out because they had wiretapped his phone. Right. So Albert Brooks's phone, like they wiretapped it. That's how they found out about mm-hmm. like all the connections that he had been making, and they know that Ryan Gosling is still alive. The easiest way to get to him yeah. will be to kill his neighbor. I see, yeah. So, basically, he goes to that strip club mm-hmm. from the movie. Okay, like yeah. to I don't know. He just figures, like, maybe that that had some CD Underworld connections or something. Yeah. Freaking doesn't find anything, obviously, yeah. but there's, like, girls flirting with him there, like, oh, what you, what you doing? Because he's got that sweet jacket. Uh-huh. Uh, he ends up then just like kind of sleeping in his car because he doesn't have a place anymore. He just right, sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> he sleeps in his car, maybe like close by. It's a nice car to be doing so. Yeah, freaking wakes up to the windshield being bashed in with like a baseball bat. Yeah. Freaking starts his car, like runs it into the guy that's in front of his car, sandwiches mm-hmm. him in, in an alley, like, and then he starts a fight with the other guy. It was like two guys that kind of mobbed him. Yeah, and uh, basically fights to death kills this kills this guy and then it has the guy who's been pinned between his car and like yeah. questions him to find out he gets a name he knows a name now yeah that guy dies like of course it's yeah. like internal bleeding or yeah. something <laughs> so basically he has like a name now he goes i felt like what's more yeah. la he goes to a taco shop maybe yeah oh like, yeah I, I did that. yeah <laughs> at like three in the or morning taco truck, all yeah. beaten up because he just got his ass kicked yeah so and then like one of the strippers maybe comes in who just got off her shift and yeah. then like she says she can like essentially he can come over to her place since he has nowhere to stay and she, yeah. and he can lick his wounds there. Oh yeah, it's kind of the beginning of the movie. He's got his name. He knows where he's gonna go. He's got to start taking out the Italian mob. Yeah. So <laughs> that was basically all I came up with. Well, I mesmerized. I was just like, oh, what? And then what happens? And then what happens? Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. that's just the beginning, but it's just a hook like. I wanted it to get there. So I looked up what Driven took place and it was just mm-hmm. the synopsis was very short. It was the same thing. Like he now lives in Scottsdale. Arizona. Or, yeah, uh-huh. Arizona and like is laying low, but like two mobsters come and kill his uh, wife oh, really? or his fiance. Oh, he and that's, and then he goes, and then yeah. he goes on a whole freaking revenge story. So I felt like this still has enough to tie back to the first movie while still, you know, maintaining inspired by the book. S- yeah, inspired by a little bit of the book from what little I knew cuz I didn't I, I haven't read Driven. Yeah. I forgot that Drive was based off a of book too, the original book called Drive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember in the opening credits, yeah, and I'd love to see Nicholas Wayne Ruffin come back uh, cuz I feel like no movie has been able to touch Drive. I mean, I did like uh, the Neon Demon for the most part, but it's been a while though, and I know he's got that popular show still. But yeah, uh, I'd love to see it. And like, yeah, this sounds like a fun story already. For the torture scene, I kind of imagine like the guy pin, just like anytime he like the guy's like "fuck you" or like not giving <laughs> him answers, he just revs up the gas and just like it's just like room, and then just like he starts to bleed more out of the mouth. I was like, all right, I'll tell you. Yeah, I definitely wanted that to be like yeah. to the same you know graphic violence that the yeah. first film had while still maintaining you know that that gritty underbelly of LA yeah of course or whether it's you know the the kind of vintage style that mm-hmm. the original had with you know these magic hour beautiful shots in the LA river so i feel like i'm going to still be you know faithful to the original semi not faithful but at least inspired by the book Mm -hmm. and just kind of go with a new look into just pure vengeance or revenge movie even more so than drive because we don't have any of the love aspect in it like we barely we don't even see irene to be honest she doesn't even pop up carrie mulligan's not in it the sun's not in it but like i felt like ryan gosling shared something special with you know standard son the little boy like Mm -hmm. just now it's now it's like all out vengeance because right. why would you just kill a little kid in like broad daylight? Right. Yeah. You know, like Ryan Gosling is a good guy. Of course. Yeah. He's going to commit his whole yeah. life to like making sure that yeah. everything's done to take 
out whoever did this yeah yeah with the 10 year anniversary coming up like i wish like the ball was rolling to get it out in theaters next year because ryan gosling still has aged very well and stuff and like you said carrie mulligan uh like i haven't seen her in a bit and i do miss her but like all you would need is a photo for her but this is definitely a sequel like you had me interested the whole time and i want to see where it'd go um but yeah i miss this movie and great story you went with and that's going to conclude this week's episode of Sequeled. If you haven't already checked out Drive, be sure to watch it through our Amazon affiliate link in the description box below. Go ahead and smash that like button, guys, and comment and let me know what you thought about my version of Drive. And if you had a better idea, hit us with that. Go ahead and hit that subscription button and click the notification bell to know when there's a new video. That's going to conclude this week's episode. Be sure to tune in next week for another new video.